What is up guys? Happy Friday. Hope you guys had a great week. Uh, we're in the Rye studio today shooting another video. Gonna be going over my camera setup for filming whitetails. Um, kind of gonna go over some of the stuff that I use, some stuff that I like, some kind of the stuff that I don't like. And uh, yeah, so let's dive right in. All right, so here we go. Uh, first thing you're gonna wanna get getting into filming your deer hunts is a video camera. It's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, a lot of people can't afford to just go buy a 2000 plus dollar camera. There's a lot of entry level cameras out there. Uh, this camera here that I've been using for six, maybe seven years, going on six, seven years, um, is just an all around good camera. It's a Sony FDR AX100 uh, 4K video camera. Um, by Sony. I think this camera was about 2000 bucks. I'm sure they're down a lot on price now, maybe in the $1,500 range. Um, but I had a buddy of mine who just picked up um, a similar model to this. It's the uh, FDR AX53. And I put that footage and this footage side by side. And I think that AX53 is just as good, if not even a little bit crisper. Um, and those cameras, MSRP underneath a thousand bucks. I think they're like in the eight or $900 range. Um, so definitely check those out if you're interested in getting a Sony video camera. Super, super cool. Um, but it's overall a pretty good camera. They have really good zoom, uh, pretty good low light. You can attach a, uh, a shotgun mic up top or a set of wireless mics or pretty much anything you want. A link controller, so you can run your zoom, you can run your focus, you can run your record, you can turn the camera on or off, um, which is super helpful. Actually, I got a setup over here. So I have my tripod on there, so I'm just kind of doing this for reference. Um, this is a Libex zoom controller that I use on my DSLR mainly. I don't use it on the Sony very often, um, but it's super nice. Like when you have gloves on and stuff, um, it's like just a big fat button if you're just trying to zoom, which is super nice. Big red record button, pretty self-explanatory. Um, this upper mount here is an SP Gadgets. I don't know if they make that anymore, but it holds my GoPro remote and it's really convenient because I have everything right there on my right hand. My zoom, my record, my GoPro record. I can look right down what's on my hip, you know, boom, good to go. So that's super convenient. Um, but yeah, this, this Sony video camera is basically an all around good camera. It's gonna shoot crisp footage on the go, on the fly, point and shoot. Um, it has a bunch of manual settings, but you can honestly run this thing like full auto, full, full auto ISO, full auto ND filters. Uh, full auto focus, everything that you need. Just point it at the deer, it's on, it's running, you're, you're recording, you're good, let it fly. Um, when you get into a DSLR, DSLRs change a lot of things. You know, it's They're more of a manual type thing. So what looks good in the morning might not look good in the afternoon, and what looks good in the afternoon might not look good in the evening. There's a lot of settings between ISOs and exposures and shutter speeds and you know your lenses and your f-stops and it just goes on and on and on the complexity of DSLRs. so if you're a new hunter looking to get into filming your deer hunts definitely check out a video camera i wouldn't recommend just jumping straight to a dslr um, unless you have some photography knowledge um, on dslrs um, i think they're pretty similar in um, the footage that you're going to get um, there's some things that are different i think in my purse uh, personal opinion i think the dslr shoot a little bit crisper footage and I also think that you get a lot more depth um, you could put you know this video and my DSLR side by side and I'm gonna probably choose the DSLR if the settings were set right um, but if the settings weren't set right this is gonna look better so it really comes down into the user um, of who's running the camera and if the settings are correct if you're worried about getting the settings correct just get a video camera run it on auto you're gonna be good to go um, but the camera that I'm using is on the tripod so I can't really show it to you, but it's a Panasonic GH5. Um, I love Panasonic. I've been using them for a long time. I actually used a GH4 uh, for a few years, maybe three years, and then I upgraded to the GH5. Um, I wanted to upgrade to the S1H, but they are so expensive, not really in the mood to, to spend that kind of money. But one thing I would keep in mind if you are shopping around for DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, video cameras, when a new camera comes out, it's gonna be high end, it's gonna be expensive, and then you wait six months, eight months to a year, and that price is gonna come down you know, pretty pretty good. Um, so what I did is I waited till that GH5 came down on price, and then I was I was able to jump on it. I'm not sure what I paid for it. I think they're down like under 2,000 bucks now for the GH5, and they were 3,000 plus bucks when they came out. So they're, they're coming down quite a bit. Um, but another thing I would recommend if you do decide that you want to go with the DSLR is get a good lens. Um, your, your camera body is only as good as your lens. Um, so get something with a good low f-stop. 
lower that F number on your lens is gonna be higher the amount of light that can come into your camera. So lower that f-stop, better low light. Um, just keep that in mind when you're shopping around for um, lenses for your DSLR. I don't have a super high-end lens. Um, this is the lens that I'm using. It's a 45 to 170 Panasonic. The one thing I like about this lens, running it on my GH5, is it does have a power zoom. So when I'm running my light controller with my DSLR, I can actually run the zoom on my DSLR with this lens. So it's not super good in low light, but it does um, work pretty good. I'm, I'm just filming deer, you know, I'm not trying to film a movie. I'm, I'm basically just trying to, at the easiest way possible, zoom in on the deer and get my bow in my hand and shoot it. So um, that Liebeck zoom controller with this Panasonic 45 to 175 zoom lens makes it super, super convenient. Um, like I said, kind of sucks in low light. It does okay. It's not good because there's some really good high-end lenses out there, but it does the trick. Um, and then, like I said, the, the GoPro remote there is pretty nice too because I can basically just, boom, hit the GoPro and uh, that's good to go. So your, your big camera that's gonna be on a camera arm in front of you is gonna be your main camera. And then I also like to run a second camera, which is normally like a GoPro um, or a smaller DSLR. This is gonna be the GoPro that I run. It's a GoPro Hero 7 Black, uh, pretty decent. I think they're all pretty similar now, six, seven, and eights. The eights don't really seem to have anything too spectacular. The one thing I'm interested in is they have a flip back, which is pretty sweet for vlogging and stuff like that. When those come out, I'm definitely gonna try to pick one of those up. But what I do is I run this uh, GoPro, you know, clip it to a tree branch, clip it somewhere up, um, film it with my big camera, and I, like I said, I have the remote, so I can be zoom, you know, zoomed in on the deer, filming what's going on. This GoPro is gonna be filming everything that's going on. It's gonna have me in the shot, it's gonna have the, you know, every, it's gonna have everything, it's gonna capture everything. So that's like plan A is the big camera, plan B is my GoPro, which is like my B-roll camera. And then here is plan C. This is the Tacticam 5.0 Ultra HD. This thing is sweet too, I just picked this up. I actually haven't even got a chance to use it much other than just around the house, but you know, you got your big camera running, the GoPro in the back, and this is plan C. This is actually gonna screw right into your stabilizer on your bow, which is really sweet. Sometimes something happens in the heat of the moment and you just wanna get that deer killed. There's a lot, a lot of stuff going on and you might just say, hey, push those cameras away, get them shot, shoot them. You're gonna have them on camera with this, no matter what, you know? Or, or even like, you know, the big camera, he steps out of frame. Well, he's not gonna step out of frame on this because if you're aiming at him, it's gonna get him in video, so. Plan A, big camera. Plan B, GoPro. Plan C, Tacticam. They're not that expensive. They're super good, super good footage. Pick one of those Tacticams up, and they're awesome. Yeah, so I kinda wanna go over some camera arms. Um, I've been using a Muddy Outfitter arm. It's like 100 bucks, 120 bucks on Amazon. I think it's literally like six or seven years old. Um, I love the camera, or uh, the camera arm. I love the stability, but the only issue I run into with that is that it's very heavy, it's kind of bulky, and it's, a hard, it's really hard to fit in the backpack. Uh, so I'll show you that now. So this is the base. The base is gonna go right against the tree. Then you have a ratchet strap that's gonna go around the tree and hook back up to it. So that's how you're gonna ratchet strap the base to the tree. Once you have the base ratchet strapped, you're gonna slide your camera arm into it. And then your fluid head is gonna go on top of the arm. So you have base, camera arm, fluid head. And then your camera is gonna go on top of the fluid head. So when you're filming, you know, you can on the fly, good to go, just like that. It's a muddy outfitter arm, like I said. I do like this arm, it's very stable, it's, it's affordable, it's a nice, uh, I'm not gonna say entry level because there's a lot of experts and pros in, in the industry that use this for every camera that they have, but the only downside to it is just the size and the bulk, but it is an awesome camera, um, camera arm, I mean. Um, with that being said, I do wanna show you guys the camera arm that I'm trying out this year can't give a, um, a full review on it yet because I haven't put a season on it, but I am excited uh, to show you guys. Lone Wolf Custom Gear Pocket Arm. And this thing is so light and it is so thin. It's not even in comparison to the muddy that I've been using these, these past years. So I'm really excited to, to try this thing out. Um, all I've done so far is basically just strapped it into a tree in the yard, threw my setup on it and was, was testing it out. Um, so far, so good. Um, one thing, this guy has just a regular strap here, so you're basically just gonna hook it on there like that, run around the tree, hook it back up, pull it tight, and then you're hooked up. And then here, obviously, your arm extends. 
I think I'm only an inch shorter in length compared to the Muddy. Um, so that's nice. I thought because I was going to such a small arm, it was going to be a big difference, but it's not. Um, and then, so basically you have your bubble up here. Basically you're going to put it against the tree and then you have your adjustment left and right. And then here you have your adjustment forward and back. And by adjusting that, you're just going to spin this. So basically you're going to put some pressure down, tighten it against the tree, let go, super solid. Um, I put it in the tree and it seemed pretty solid. My camera setup between my fluid head, my camera, all the stuff that I've been showing you is pretty heavy on the end of this arm. Um, I think this is made a little bit more for the more run and gun guys where I have a pretty heavy setup. So if you have a really heavy fluid head and a really heavy camera, I, I wouldn't really recommend going to this. But if you have a DSLR, you know, like a Panasonic with a micro four thirds, like a light lens, like something that's kind of light and compact, I could see you getting away with something like this. Um, so when I'm running this arm, I'm probably going to run, actually just ordered it. It's a Manfrotto B, B Live or B Free Live, I don't know what the heck it's called, but it's a 0.8 of one pound um, compared to the fluid head that I have on this camera right now is actually up over two pounds. So I think going to that 0.8 pound fluid head with this, running my DSLR with the smaller lens, the smaller um, shotgun mic, and I think it'll work out good. So I'm super excited to try that out. I'll definitely uh, keep you guys updated on how that works this year. Um, but super cool product from Lone Wolf Custom Gear. I have no affiliation with them, so I'm not trying to sell you on it. Um, I also have no affiliation with Muddy. So I'll drop the link to the description on both of those products um, below. You guys can check them out. Um, I, just, I got the one on Amazon. I bought this from LoneWolfCustomGear.com. So, but that's where both of those came from. I do want to show you this in a Badlands pack. It's pretty cool to see. Um, Actually, let me show you this first. So here is the base on the Muddy. This is a scout pack. This isn't really what I would use for filming, um, putting all my stuff in when I'm going filming and deer hunting. I use this pack strictly for like scouting. Um, you know, if I have everything in the tree and all I'm gonna take is my camera, maybe I would use this pack, but I don't typically use this for deer hunting. So it's a very small pack, keep that in mind. But this is the base for the Muddy. Look at the size of this thing. I'm trying to get that in there. Plus this, plus a ratchet strap, plus, you know, plus, 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 plus a camera, plus lenses, plus a fluid head, plus, yeah, not, this is huge, you know, it's, it's bulky. Plan on carrying 15 pounds, 20 pounds maybe to the woods with you when you're using this. Just keep that in mind. I do want to show you this Lone Wolf Custom Gear in comparison. This is freaking sweet. So check how thin this thing is, low profile, slides right in the pack, and you wouldn't even know it's in there. Literally, like, if I picked that pack up, I probably wouldn't even know that, that that's in there. So, super cool product from Lone Wolf Custom Gear. I can't wait to get that lighter tripod head on it and uh, to get it in the woods and film some deer and check the stability, it's super cool. Um, another thing I wanna go over is uh, video light. Not a super important thing, but it is an important thing. Um, nothing ruins a shot like trying to recover a deer with a flashlight or trying to recover a deer with a headlamp. Um, I'm sure you've seen it on the Outdoor Channel, Sportsman Channel, wherever you're watching your hunt on YouTube. The guy shoots a giant and they're going to recover it and you just have this little tiny light, you know, focused on the, either the guy's face or the deer and he's trying to tell the story and you can't see it. Pick up a light. They are not expensive. I mean, I literally think this is a $20 light and this thing, shines like 10 foot by 10 foot and you can run the settings you can turn the brightness up or down mounts right on the top of your hot shoe cold shoe on the top of your camera definitely get a light you don't have to put it in your pack all the time what i do is i sleep mine in my truck and if i were to harvest a deer i'm going back to my truck for a second anyway run back grab the light grab some gloves definitely definitely pick a light up so this is a just a road 59 dollars vlogging microphone Nothing special, it's just basically just a little microphone. Um, super good for entry level, super good for picking up audio. You know, if I'm vlogging, talking like this, picks up audio pretty good. One thing I noticed, if I'm filming in on deer, you know, coming through the leaves and I want some real crisp audio or the buck is just shredding a tree and I want nice audio, this thing isn't gonna pick that up the best for, for deer. But, it, but as far as talking and vlogging, and stuff like that works good. Um, but if you want some real crisp audio, especially stuff that's going to pick up long range, you're going to want to get like a little bit higher end stuff. 
So the mic that I have on my GH5 that's filming this video is a Rode, and I believe that's the $200 shotgun mic, and that thing picks up phenomenal um, audio. filming deer, uh, walking through the woods, long range. Normally I'd run my wireless mics, but I'm only a couple foot away from my camera, so I just dropped the shotgun up there, and it's picking up really good audio. So um, lots of options with um, shotgun mics, but the point of a shotgun mic, a lot of people don't know this, why it's called a shotgun mic. Shotgun mic is called shotgun mic because it's, it's, it's picking up exactly like a shotgun would. It's picking up what's dead in front of it. So if I'm standing behind this camera, you're not gonna be able to hear me very well. But if it's aiming right at me, you're gonna be able to hear it pretty good. So that's that's why they're called shotgun mics. But another thing is a set of wireless mics. These are huge. A set of wireless mics when you're deer hunting and you're trying to tell a compelling story in the tree stand, um, a lot of the time you're whispering. And trying to tell an exciting story while you're whispering is even more difficult. Um, so having a good set of wireless microphones is really nice. Um, there actually is a way that you can run that microphone plus your wireless microphones together so you can pick up the deer and you can pick up you talking. You can pick up your narration, you can pick up two things. It's um, what it is, is this guy right here. It's a two channel adapter. You can get these on Amazon if you go like 39 bucks, mounts right on the top of your camera. Um, it basically switches your camera or DSLR from a one channel to a two channel. Um, so you can plug in the wireless microphones and your shotgun mic and adjust both the levels. So that's super useful. It's not that expensive. These mics are the Rode Links. I think these are 400 bucks. Alex actually just got the new Rode wireless mics. I think those are 300 bucks. So everything is coming down in, in prices of video stuff nowadays. Like when I was first looking into getting a set of wireless mics, they were like seven, eight hundred dollars. You couldn't even get them. So when these came out at 400, I just I jumped right on them, 400 bucks, and now you can get them for 300 dollars. So, and, and this thing, I think when these first came out, you could only get them in the um, the bigger, not the, the smaller 3.5 audio adapter. You'd have to get them in the big XLR mounts. So these were like 150 bucks. Now they're $39. Everything is consistently coming down in price. It's making it more and more affordable to get into to filming your deer. So pick up a set of wireless mics, audio adapter, and a shotgun mic. You'll have some crystal clear audio filming your deer hunts. Talk about Tacticam. Kind of stupid, but not that stupid at the same time. GoPros do not have very good um, battery life. It doesn't matter if you charge them and you have brand new batteries and you bring two, they're still gonna die. You turn it on, you leave it running, especially on Wi-Fi, your battery's gonna die. So what I did is I picked up this little GoPro um, battery charger. Basically just takes two USBs. Um, it's nice too if you're doing an all day sit in a tree stand, you can run one of these for your phone charger, one of these to the GoPro. I run Velcro around it, put it right on the GoPro. So when this is clamped in a tree, I got her there, velcroed up, plugged in, wired with a battery, and I got the other one going on my phone. So I don't gotta worry about my phone dying, nothing like that. Um, so pick up one of these up. It doesn't have to be a GoPro brand, but I've had this for four years, going on five years. Still holds super good, super cold weather, and it's pretty rugged, um, and I like it. Definitely recommend picking one of those up. Yeah, so I think in a nutshell, that's pretty much my filming setup. Um, it's nothing too complex. Um, it doesn't really matter if you decide you want to go with a video camera or a DSLR, um, wireless mics or shotgun mics or a muddy arm or a, a lone wolf custom gear arm. It really doesn't matter. Um, just, just get what you can afford to get, whether it's a GoPro or a smartphone or anything that you can get. Get out in the woods and, and film deer and it's such a cool um, thing to, to relive your adventure, to go out there and to film those deer in the wild and come back to camp and say hey look what i seen like not just telling your buddies oh yeah i saw this deer and he was cool he was big no check this footage out let's plug it in i want to show you there's something really satisfying about seeing your footage on the big screen being able to live that and especially when it all comes together and you get to kill that buck of that one one opportunity all year and you get to kill that big buck or um, you know, a kid or your girlfriend or somebody gets to kill and experience that awesome moment, you can relive that forever. So it's super cool to, to film your deer hunts. But yeah, that's basically in a nutshell my filming setup. If you guys have any questions about filming, about video cameras, DSLRs, audio, I'm no expert. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert. I am by no means, but I have learned some things that work for me and don't work for me. And yeah, I'd be happy to help anyone. So drop a question or drop any questions in the comments. 
send us a message and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope I didn't blabble too much. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I uh, hope if you got, everybody has a good rest of their Friday. So have a good one.